Hi, this is Jamie, intuitive astrologer, and I want to share some about the Gemini solar eclipse, letting any intuitive messages that want to come through, come through. And I've been playing with tarot, and I wanted to share some cards with you. I bless my deck to the vibration of love and ask for some messages to come through that would be to the best and highest good and supportive for anyone watching. And I'm working with the tarot, of the sevenfold mystery by Robert Place. And so my first card I drew is the nine of pentacles. And the first intuitive message that came through to me is miracles are possible. And we see here nine is this um, energy of fruition. And the amazing thing about this card is we see this fertile, lush tree, you know, abundant with the, with the, you know, with the coins that are growing from the barren land. And so this is, this is like the magical Gemini energy I'm sensing into is that like, how can we hold space for the new possibility? And from having a very fertile inner environment, we can actually, you know, holding the energy, holding the vision, um, holding the dream, there can be this powerful rippling out from all this amazing Gemini energy that we have been experiencing. And yeah, I think that's what I want to, I think that's what I want to share about that, you know, and the, the coin is about physical manifestation. So, you know, first, first we have to hold vision. We have to hold space for the possibility. And Gemini invites us to kind of step back and hold space for the possibility that's available in the moment, the new realities, the new potentials. And when we're connected to that, then we can align with new ways of reality. This really is a time we can take some quantum leaps forward in our consciousness, you know, do some multidimensional timeline surfing because everything really is vibration. And the air element, which this, you know, all this energy is happening in is uh, connected to energy. Like you can see in the Aquarius glyph, which is another air element sign, you know, the glyph is the waves. Those are energy waves. And so also I pulled the lady of swords here, swords, the air element, you know, just like Gemini. So it makes sense. And she's playing the music of the celestial spears. We can see the stars that she's wearing. And this is just for me, the affirmation of really having that clear channel to receive the music of the celestial spears. There is so much noise has so much information coming down the information stream in the collective that it, it can be, you know, it can be almost overwhelming. It can sound like that, you know, like cacophony of sound. And so it's like, how can I create a really clear inner channel, you know, with my mind, with my breath, really creating that clear energy channel to receive the pure, clear messages from the from the stars, from the heavens, from the celestial spheres. And so, um, and I love that, you know, she's playing the lyre um, because Mercury is right with the sun and moon for this eclipse and mythology, Mercury, you know, invented the lyre and it's a way to strum, to, to play, to bring through the music of the celestial sphere. So how can we have a clear channel to bring in the clear messages from above, you know, and from the earth below, having them meet in our hearts. And then I also drew the queen of swords. So another air elemental sign. Um, so air element connected to Gemini, we see the swords, one sword going to the sky, one sword going to the ground, almost looks like that Gemini glyph with those two pillars, you know, in the Gemini glyph, which can represent duality, um, choices, um, it can, you know, heaven and earth, all these different types of duality that we experience. Um, I heard um, Denise Real share, it's like also the breath, the breath, you know, the movement of the breath with those two pillars as well, which I love. And then we see the uh, feathers of truth, the feathers of justice here. And so for me, the biggest message coming through is that there are, there's always two different perspectives. I think there's actually like um, an infinite amount of perspectives in every moment, but there are different perspectives. So really being aware of 
um, these different perspectives that there are more than one perspective and it's like which one feels most aligned to us so there is some element of choice um, there is some element of different perspective here um, yeah and to me actually the biggest intuitive message that's coming through is really honoring the feminine way of perceiving reality um, because Venus started her cycle in Gemini in June 2020 and she has a 19 month cycle. So this whole cycle, we're still here. There's been this overall kind of energy of Venusian Gemini energy, which the main themes are the integration of the mind and the heart, um, perceiving, right? Perceiving from our hearts, relating from our hearts. And I think there's been this big, I think it's calling this big energy shift from, from a, you know, kind of a societal perspective. There's been like more value placed on the more left brain, linear, logical, fact-based way of, of perceiving reality. And sometimes the more feminine, non-linear, subtle, multidimensional, feeling sensual base can be, um, has not been as valued by our current society. And so I think there's this big call to really honor that way of knowing the yin, the right brain, the feminine, the more sensual feeling in the body, in the heart, perceiving from the heart. And so I think this this reminder, this card to perceive from our hearts. Now, eclipses are very intense time. The energy is very, very amplified. There are new moons and full moons that are incredibly amplified. How much we feel them on a personal level really relates to how um, how close is the eclipse touching into something in our personal natal chart? Because as the planets move around the sky, they activate our natal planets like little tuning forks, right? So if you have a planet, particularly, so the solar eclipse on Thursday is going to be sun and moon, 19 degrees, 47 arc minutes of Gemini. So do you have something around 19 degrees of Gemini Sag, the opposite sign, or particularly uh, Pisces and Virgo, the squaring signs. Like if there's something within a degree or a few degrees, you're going to feel it the most, but this is certainly all energy. Um, certainly for all, this is, I think, very important that we are aware of the energy as we're moving into this week, you know, eclipses are times of unpredictability. Um, they can be like course corrections, resets, reboots. The energy is incredibly amplified. So you want to take it easy. <laughs> Take it slow, not get too tossed around in the energy if, if possible. And, um, you know, we are moving, we are in the dark moon phase right now. I think it's a really great time to be in retreat, holding sacred space during eclipses. I like to be um, partaking in purification practices. So purification, right? Gemini, particularly purification of my mind, my energy channels, my body, my space. Um, Sasha Benedetti reminded me in the other day that in Buddhist tradition, some Buddhist traditions, it said that lunar eclipses, like we just had a few weeks ago, almost two weeks ago, our actions are multiplied by a thousandfold. And solar eclipses, like we're about to have, our actions are multiplied by a hundred thousandfold. So that resonates for me. I think it is incredibly important what we are giving our attention to during moving into this eclipse this week. Purification for me is always so important during eclipse time. And during the eclipses, I really like to be um, in prayer and holding loving vibration, holding a loving vibration within my own energy field and really, um, you know, sending out loving vibration for the world, being in prayer and offering that loving intention for the world during, during those times of eclipses. And so, the energy is intense. If you're feeling the intensity, I mean, we had Mars, we just had like Mars square, Eris, Mars opposite Pluto. It, Mars is like the activating force in Cancer. So we have, you know, if you've been feeling a lot of emotional intensity happening, that can be very typical. Our emotions are such a beautiful thing. It's all the invitation of how can we, how can we relate to them in a healthy way? And so grounding practices are incredibly important right now. Um, centering practices, 
really coming into a supportive relationship with our mind, I think is so helpful right now, just to kind of lead us into it. We had the Sagittarius solar or Sagittarius lunar eclipse almost two weeks ago, May 26th. So sun at by Gemini and the moon at five degrees of Sagittarius. So, you know, South Node is about releasing, letting go from a very simplistic perspective. The North Node is about um, the future moving towards. So it's this evolutionary, evolutionary portal of, of, of growth, essentially. And we have eclipses when a new moon or a full moon are in close degree to the lunar nodes. They are the places where the orbit of the moon around the earth intersects with the ecliptic plane. So the path of the earth going around the sun, but it looks like the sun going around the earth from our perspective, because that path is at a little bit of a different angle than the orbit of the moon. They're about five degrees off. So every you know, every month, every month, half the month, this uh, moon is moving below south of the ecliptic plane and the other half, the, the uh, moon is moving north of the ecliptic plane. So those two points are the lunar nodes. So the, the moon, you know, are conditioning our stories with the south node, releasing, letting go with Sagittarius in the sign of Sagittarius, is about beliefs. So this last Sagittarius lunar eclipse we had has been this big invitation to release outdated, unserving, no longer supported beliefs. Um, where are we? Where are we getting uh, caught up on? You know, attached to truth that we are thinking is actually like objective truth that is actually personal truth that's separating us away from others like this is a call to release all that where we are separating and dividing over truth that south node is really bringing attention to that and an invitation to release it and you know our beliefs really do color our perception which brings us right to the north node and gemini the north node you know, the nodal access south node sagittarius north node gemini has been in these two signs since May 2020. South node is about releasing these old beliefs, dogma, hubris, uh, hubris self-righteousness. And so um, the North node in Gemini is about rewriting our story on a collective and a personal story, a personal level. What story do you want to rewrite in your life? And so this is a very powerful time because the North node is so activated right now. What story do you want to write in your life? And this Gemini energy is an invitation to hold space for new possibility, new beginnings, um, new perspective, you know, approaching the moment from a beginner's mind is inviting in new learning to be playful. We have such an energy, so much medicine and learning how to be playful through the intensity. And this is not to dismiss the intensity, the heaviness. Um, but how can we also hold space for and, 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 and have medicine of sacred play and being connected to the sweetness of life, even when everything feels very intense and, and heavy? Yeah, just tapping into, I'm just tapping into what I'm, what I'm wanting to say. I think the biggest messages for this eclipse are being very aware of our, I mean, to me, the most important thing is being aware of what I'm thinking, what I'm speaking and my energy, because those really do create our reality. And Gemini is a sign of the cultivation of the mind, thinking, speaking, relating. And so Mercury's right with the solar eclipse. So the solar eclipse is at 1947 Gemini. Mercury's at 20 Gemini, the time of the eclipse. And later that day, Mercury moves between the earth and sun. So um, this is actually like our mind, what we're thinking, is incredibly important. What we're giving attention to, being very discerning of the information we are letting in our mind right now is so important. This is not to like, keep, you know, I'm not suggesting we keep our head in the sand that we don't know what's going on in the world, but also we don't have to take in information all the time. And what our vibration is, this is more, to me, this is more about energy of holding space for the new reality that you want to live in, the world that you want to live in. And we don't even have to know the ins and outs of how it looks. This is more about just the, the feeling into the vibration um, because the vibration does ripple out and create everything. And so what we're giving our attention to this week is incredible 
incredibly important. And, you know, there may be things coming up that want to be burned off from our unconscious and that's beautiful. We don't need to suppress. We don't need to deny. But what I am suggesting is that we are very mindful of what we're giving our attention to and what our energy is this week. Like that feels so, so important, <laughs> incredibly important um, because Gemini is so connected to energy. Everything is so amplified. So for example, you know, um, instead of like focusing on what it is that I don't want in my life, focus on what I do want in my life because then we're giving energy to that. And I think it's important that we're very connected to our hearts on anything we're envisioning and holding space for as well. And then, you know, things can be kind of murky, murky, nebulous, confusing. Um, Gemini, North, Gemini, Sun, Mercury are all square to Neptune and Pisces at 23 Pisces. So anytime like Mercury, you know, um, squares Neptune, things are not going to be what they seem with the logical linear mind if we're really connected to the logical linear mind things are definitely not going to be what they seem um also mercury's retrograde so it is this reorientation rethinking revisiting re revising with our thoughts so we are in this big rewiring of our brain essentially and um so you know things can be things can be a bit more unclear and the energy does feel very watery. We also have like Venus and Cancer, Mars and Cancer, you know, Neptune and Pisces. There's so much mutable energy. I mean, things are so malleable with the mutable energy. Truth, reality, perception is so malleable. Um, but so with uh, also Sun, Moon, Mercury squared and Neptune is this dissolving energy. So Neptune is dissolving of the mind, essentially, um, which ties back to this. We've had this big release with the Sagittarius lunar eclipse of old beliefs. So there's more dissolving of the mind. Mercury's in retrograde, which is this reorientation. Now Neptune's dissolving. So dissolving of the linear, the logical mind. And so um, there is this invitation to connect into perceiving through our hearts. Neptune is um, considered, you know, like the higher octave of Venus. I don't really like using like the words higher and lower, but they're like the same energy, just different octaves. Venus, personal love, Neptune, cosmic love. Um, Venus, like our personal values, right? Neptune, like these like cosmic kind of values. Um, Neptune, Pisces, there is no words, there is no names. Um, everything is just all one. It is that, that divine love. Neptune is also connected to the imaginative dream, etheric realm. So there is this dissolving of what's linear, what's known and connecting to this imaginative. So if we can connect to the imaginative, the dream um, realms, the celestial realms, there's this very powerful opportunity. You know, Jupiter's beginning of Pisces, Jupiter's beginning to station retrograde. So there is this redreaming kind of energy. Um, there are new possibilities that we can tap into. There are more realities available than we, than we tend to think. And so how can we feel? I think it's more about dropping into the heart, perceiving from the heart, feeling from the heart. And Mercury, you know, there's this amazing alignment with this eclipse, sun or earth, moon, Mercury, sun. Now Mercury is not on the ecliptic. So Mercury is not gonna occult the sun like the moon will, but Mercury, the messenger is still there. When Mercury comes in between, Earth and sun, sun, solar, life force energy, we get an inspiring message that's sent to us. So make sure we're open to receive that message. This is a very receptive, receiving time. Um, we do want to make sure we create that quiet space, have the inner, um, be able to hear the inner voice and to notice messages around, um, messages around you. Like if you see animals coming into your life. You might see feathers on the ground. I don't know, just being open to the symbols, the messages and what's coming through and dreams as well. And then, you know, about a day after this new moon, solar eclipse, <laughs> Mercury, Kazemi, so much happening. We have um, the moon comes to meet Venus. So we are rising in our feminine essence as she's rising from the underworld. And we are reclaiming something of our feminine essence that's always been there always been within, we can bring it out. And it's really for, in cancer, it's the gifts of our emotional, uh, our emotional relating, the gifts of our emotional processing, our emotional bodies. And that's something that's been very, um, 
you know, our emotions have been very like vilified and, and, and so much of society is like, no, our emotions are beautiful. So how can we connect to the gifts of our emotions and really shine, shine through, through this, um, you know, Venus and cancer can make us more sensitive. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. So we do, it's all about how we're relating to it, right? We don't want to be completely tossed around in our emotions. We really do have a choice in how we're relating to our mind and our emotions, even though we might not always realize it. And we all experience the full range of emotions. Um, you know, how can we nurture ourselves? You know, our values come very much about our emotional well-being, nurturance, um, how do we care for our loved ones? How do we care for our loved ones in our relationships with Venus and Cancer? Starting with how do we care for ourselves? And Jupiter stationing to go retrograde. Neptune's pretty much stationing to go retrograde. So we have a lot of retrograde energy, a lot of shifting around. You know, the mutable axis is just lit up in Gemini, Sag, Vesta's in Virgo, um, squaring the lunar nose. We have uh, Neptune and Jupiter and Sagittarius. So we are experiencing some big, big shifting around, big, big changing, big reorientation. And if we can hold the vibration, you know, hold the energy, connect to the vision, really be in good relationship with our mind and our words. I mean, it's just, we, we can really, I think going back to this nine of pentacles, we can create some beautiful um, changes in our, in our reality. We really can it doesn't take, I, I did a panel last night, a live panel for the Mercury Retrograde Alchemy Summit and Caitlin Costell really spoke to, you know, those of us holding the loving vibration for a new reality. It doesn't take a lot of us um, because there is this rippling out effect. And so I just think that's such a beautiful reminder, you know, each one of us doing our own internal work and um, holding the vibration of love really does have a big impact on the world. And so be gentle of yourself, be gentle of others. If someone else triggers you, um, you know, there is a very high level of miscommunication potentiality right now. And probably means there's something, you know, on an internal level that's wanting to be uh, brought to your awareness and integrated. Chiron is, um, you know, sextiling the North Node, trining the South Node. So there is this very powerful um, energy of, of healing. And healing our own inner wounds and create an alchemizing more medicine that we can share with the world. So I love you all. I hope you have a beautiful um, experience kind of going into the eclipse, the Mercury Kazemi, the moon, Venus meet up. And um, if, you know, if there's one takeaway, it's really being very, uh, very aware of where are you giving your attention this week? Where are you giving your mind? Because where we give our attention to where our attention goes, energy flows. So keeping that in mind, I love you all.